open some calc gang. All right, so we got this uh, friction problem here. So let's go ahead and solve it. So we have this mine car, right? It weighs 4.5 megagrams. It has a center of gravity at G and a coefficient of friction is 0.4. And it has wheels A and B. So let me label these before I forget. So this is B and this is A. So first of all, it wants us to find the normal forces at B and at A, and then it wants us to ask, does the cart move? So yeah, let's go ahead and solve this problem. So if we're gonna find normal forces, uh, might be useful to uh, draw our force body diagram, right? So of course we have uh, gravity here, so I'm just gonna label this uh, force of gravity. Nice. So then we have to find out uh, normal. So normal happens when it touches the ground, so it's gonna be at the wheels here. So it's gonna be there, it's gonna be normal at B, and then of course it's gonna be normal at A. And these distances are from the, where the wheels touch the ground. So we have a force pulling this way, right? 10 kilonewtons pulling to the left, and friction is gonna uh, oppose motion. So friction is gonna be here, so this is gonna be friction at B, and then this is gonna be friction at A. So that's all of our forces, and let's go ahead and solve the problem. So first part is asking for the normal force at B. So let's find the normal force at B. Uh, how are we gonna do that, right? Well, we have four unknowns. We know force gravity. So we have four unknowns. So if we wanna get rid of two of the unknowns, we're gonna to wanna to take the moment. So for finding at B, let's take the moment at A. So some of the moments at A, we know it's gonna be equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. Uh, potentially we're at equilibrium. Uh, we don't know that yet, but basically within the car, we're gonna be at equilibrium. So let's go ahead. So first one, force gravity is pushing down. So if the force gravity is pushing here around A, it's gonna make us wanna rotate counterclockwise. So we're gonna add force gravity and it's acting in the Y direction. So we're gonna take its distance in the X direction, which is 0 0.9 meters. Right. And then we have normal at B. So normal at B is pushing upward. It's gonna make us wanna rotate clockwise. So we're gonna subtract normal at B times its distance away in the x direction this time because it's pushing the y, so that's going to be 1.5 meters. And then what else do we have? Well, we have friction. So this friction force is not going to cause a moment, right? Because it only acts in the x direction, but around A it isn't uh, displaced in the x direction, so there's going to be no friction of B that we need to add here. Uh, so then all we have is 10 kN force. So if we're pulling here, let's think about what it's going to do, right? It's going to make us kind of want to rotate this way and that's gonna be counterclockwise, so we're gonna add that 10. So it's gonna be plus 10, it's acting in the x direction, so we take its distance in the y direction. So if we're looking at the bottom of the wheel here, we have to consider the radius of the wheel plus the total height. So the radius of the wheel is 0 0.5, or 0.15 meters plus 0.9 meters. All right, so we got this equation here. Um, now we just have to solve for normal. So let's go ahead and move normal over. So normal at B, 1.5, of course we're just adding it. So force of gravity, so gravity is uh, mass times gravity. So mass times gravity, 0.9 uh, plus 10. Uh, so we can, I guess we can simplify that, whatever. 0.15 plus 0.1.05, right? And then of course, if you just divide by 1.5 and you plug your mass 4.5 megagrams, let's go ahead and do that. And you know gravity 9.81 meters a second squared. Uh, and the units work out right, megagrams, because we're in kilonewtons, so that it all can, it all works out nice. And you're gonna find that. Uh, let me draw it over here. A normal at B is equal to 33.5 kilonewtons. So that's part A. And then the next part wants us to find. Uh, solve it for, we're looking for the normal at A. So of course, let's think about what we have. So we know normal at B, we know force of gravity. If we take some of the forces in the Y direction, it's just gonna be these three. One unknown, one equation, we can solve it. Some of the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. So let's go ahead. So we add normal at B minus force of gravity plus normal at A. So we're solving for normal at A, we're gonna move that over. So normal at A is equal to negative normal B plus force of gravity. So solving this all the way, so we know normal of B, so that's gonna be negative 33.5 plus, and then what force of gravity is mass, 
4.5 times gravity, 9.81. Yep, and then if you solve this, normal at A is equal to 10.7 kilonewtons. There you go. All right, so then what are we solving for? We're gonna ask, does the card move, right? So now that we have everything, we should be able to solve this question. So if the cart is gonna move, that means that this friction can't cause the cart to move, it can only cause the cart not to move. So what we can do is we can basically take these frictions and say, if this 10 kilonewton force is greater than these frictions, then the cart's gonna move. Otherwise, it's not gonna move. So how am I gonna do that? Well, we're gonna take some of the forces in the X direction. And let's count them up. So if some of the forces in the X direction is negative, that means that our card is gonna go in the x direction, right? Uh, or if it's negative, that means it's gonna go to the left, which means the card's gonna move. If some of the forces in the x are positive, that means that the card's gonna be pushing in the, uh, this direction, which means that these friction forces are gonna be greater than the force being applied. And if you get a positive number here, that basically is saying it's not gonna move because the friction is greater than the applied force, and that's just gonna cause the system not to move. So we're gonna say negative 10 for the applied force plus friction at B plus friction at A. And then uh, we can simplify that so it'll be negative 10 plus, so it'll be coefficient of friction times normal at B plus coefficient of friction normal at A because friction is equal to normal times uh, the coefficient of friction. So we know all these numbers, so it'll be negative 10 plus the coefficient of friction is 0.4 normal at B, which is 33.5 plus 0.4, normal at A, which is 10.7. So then if you do the math on this, you're gonna get that some of the forces in the X is equal to uh, 7.68 kilonewtons. So like we found here, we found that the, some of the forces in the X direction are positive, and that means that the forces pulling this direction are greater than the forces pulling that direction. That's saying that the friction is stronger than the applied force, and we're not gonna move. So the answer is uh, no. There you go. So if you got a negative number, it would, it would move. If you got a positive number, it's not gonna move. So there you go, that's how you solve this problem. Uh, it's not too tricky. It's stuff we've been doing all this time with any added friction, and yeah, so it's the same as usual. So yeah, if you have any trouble with uh, statics in general, I have a whole playlist on my channel. Uh, feel free to come check them out and uh, learn together. So yeah, see you in the next one, guys. Peace.